All right, I just finished watching Ring of Honor for January 28th, 2012. Man, very good main event. Awesome main event. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, show's in Baltimore, Maryland. And they start the show off with a recap of Steen just killing everyone with package pile drivers from Final Battle. Um, the first thing they do is they have a promo with the embassy. They got R.D. Evans, Prince Nana, Thomas, Tomasa Champa. And Champa calls out T.J. Perkins, and he says, you know, you, you claim you've been undefeated on TV, but you've only had three matches. I'm the real undefeated champion of Ring of Honor. So, T.J. Perkins versus Tomasa Champa is the first match on the show. And this match... Pretty good. Uh, they hit some. They hit some crazy spots. A lot of kicks by T.J. Perkins. Um, one crazy spot they did was actually Tomasa Champa throws T.J. Perkins into the ropes, and he kind of gets stuck in the middle, like uh, like he was going for a six one nine kinda. So while T.J. Perkins is held in the ropes, Tomasa Champa just charges him with a knee right to his face. I mean, this looked bad. It, uh, it looked like this really hurt. He gets him on the outside. He picks him up kind of like a, a wheelbarrow and just slams him into the guardrail. So they had some pretty crazy spots. Eventually, you know, Ciampa lowers his knee pad and hits two big running knees into TJ Perkins' face while he's in the corner. And just really hurts this guy. He picks him up. Hits a power bomb into a backstabber, and he gets the win. So this is actually T.J. Perkins' first Ring of Honor television defeat. They show a little clip of Grizzly Redwood backstage, and he's talking about his life and how you know he was born premature. They said he wouldn't live past the age of four. He grew up and had to go through all these surgeries and. Just horrible stuff. And, you know, he always wanted to wrestle. He never let anything stop him and let anything get in his way. It's pretty awesome build up for Grizzly Redwood here. This was pretty awesome. Um, so it leads into a match with Grizzly Redwood, and he's uh, wrestling this guy, Devin Storm. I have not seen Devin Storm before, and he's got his ear pierced and his nose pierced with like a chain connecting the two kind of like the old um i think it was uh mosh of the headbangers like he used to have and or thrasher i believe it was thrasher actually of the headbangers and they used to wear the nose rings with a chain to the ear ring gimmick but this match <clears throat> is interrupted by the house of truth and Truth comes out. He's got Michael Elegant. He's got Roderick Strong. And he gets in the ring and he says, I'm going to offer you, Devin Storm, two choices. You can take $500 and let Michael Elegant wrestle Grizzly Redwood. Or choice number two, you can piss off Michael Elegant. Devin Storm looks at him and he takes the money. Which is good, because I have no idea how he was going to wrestle with that chain on his face. That would just be horrible. I know that thing would get ripped out. So, Michael Elegant is, I guess, going to squash Grizzly Redwood, is, is what it looks like is going to happen. And Truth says, after this match, Grizzly, you're going to wish you died as a child. And I was like, wow, man, that's hardcore. And Truth does commentary during the match, and he actually says it again. He says, I'm, you know, people think I'm such a bad guy, but I'm willing to pay for Grizzly Redwood's funeral after this match. Just being typical heel, Art, uh, Truth, Martini. But Grizzly Redwood, even though he's up against Michael Elegant, who's probably a hundred times heavier, he holds his own. He gets in a lot of offense. He definitely doesn't get jobbed out or squashed here. He holds his own, he puts up a good fight, and he comes across as believable. Um, they did some pretty cool spots. Uh, Elegant actually catches Grizzly when he goes for a dive to the outside and just slams him into the guardrail. 
and the crowd popped for that. But Grizzly also hits a face buster on Elegant. He hits a Tornado DDT, but Michael Elegant hits him with a power bomb into the turnbuckles, and then the spinning sit down power bomb for the win. So he does lose, but like I said, it, they had the promo at the beginning for Grizzly Redwood that made him look good, and then the match made him look like a believable competitor. He tried. He just came up a little short. So they show another recap of Steen versus Carino from Final Battle. Shows Steen just destroying everyone, uh, hitting Generico with a package pile driver through a table, Generico having to be stretchered out. Then they go into a promo with Steen, and he's standing behind a cage, and he says, you know, for the past year I've felt like a caged animal, not being able to be on Ring of Honor TV. He says the show's only missing, you know, a few things. It's There's no unpredictability, there's no chaos, there's no fear. But next week, when I return to Ring of Honor TV, I will bring all those things with me. And he says, you know, Jim Cornette's gone soft, but I haven't. And I'm going to beat Richards for the title. And it was pretty good promo. Uh, Kevin Steen is awesome. Shows Jim Cornette talking about Kevin Steen and how in one night he injured three guys. And he doesn't know what's going to happen in a week or a month or a year. Given that much time, what's, what damage Steen could cause. And he says he knows that Steen's really popular and he's got a lot of fans. But he can't risk other you know wrestlers' well-being on just Steen's popularity. So he's got other wrestlers to worry about, he says. And he says he's going to have a message for Steen next week on Ring of Honor TV. So, a lot of promos tonight. They cut to another promo of Eddie Edwards talking backstage about the problems he's been having with Kyle O'Reilly. How all these problems started after Eddie won the title the first time. Um, he basically thinks Kyle's jealous of him. He wants to be an American Wolf. He looks up to Davey Richards says that he should be loyal to Adam Cole, his tag team partner, and not so loyal to Davey Richards because he's just leaving Adam Cole basically in the dust. And he thinks he's just jealous and he's mad that he won the title before Davey Richards and that that, bother, that bothers Kyle O'Reilly. And Kyle says that it's not the fact that he won, it's just the way he acted after he won the title it kind of changed him and it put Davey in an awkward position. And, you know, he says that he showed loyalty to Davey Richards, but Eddie Edwards showed no loyalty by training with Dan, Dan Severn while Richards was in Japan, which is what Richards had planned to do, but Edwards trained with Severn. So they kind of just go back and forth, and then Davey says, you know, it's lose-lose for me. These guys are like my my best friends, my family members, and I feel like my family members are at war right now. But if I had to pick one guy to have my back, and he thinks about it for a second, and then he says Kyle O'Reilly. So I'm not exactly sure where they're going with this, but it's uh, it's looking like it's going to end up with Eddie Edwards versus Kyle O'Reilly, definitely for sure. And they cut to another promo, and this time it's Mike Bennett. He's backstage with Maria, and he says, I almost won the TV title at Final Battle, but next week I'm facing Jay Lethal for the TV title on Ring of Honor TV, and I will win this time. Oh my god, I can't, I forgot how many promos there were in a row here, but we go to the world's greatest tag team, and they're talking about how they deserve a rematch, and, you know, after all the crap they went through in New York, and with the Briscoes, they should get a rematch. But when they went to the officials, they just asked them where their checks were for $5,000 each for the chair shots to the head they gave the Briscoes. And then they tell them they have to wrestle the Bravados. So they said that next week we're, we're going to have a message for the Briscoes. Then, uh, then they have the Briscoes backstage and they're cutting a promo basically hyping up the 10th anniversary show where they're going to wrestle the Young Bucks. And just awesome Briscoe promo. It was, it was basically just a short advertisement clip for the pay-per-view. But um, Then they have uh, the main event. 
and this was a really good main event. This was Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander versus Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly. And Cornet comes out to do commentary for this match. And they did some really good moves here. A lot of dives by Coleman and Alexander to the outside. Um, just everybody was great in this match. Um, Coleman and Alexander showed some really good teamwork, and so did Richards and O'Reilly. There was one thing in this match I didn't like, though. Um, there was a spot where O'Reilly gets... Uh, they. Like, Coleman shoves Davey Richards into O'Reilly, and he's holding on to him. He's, like, grabbed him, and he has his head, and then Coleman kicks him in the face, which knocks down O'Reilly and simultaneously gives Richards a DDT, and that just looked really choreographed. It did not—I don't know. I just didn't like that. It's too too much for me. Like, if they're going to do spots, it should not— looked like they just went through the whole thing. I mean, I know it's wrestling, it's professional wrestling, but that did not come off very good, I thought. But, I mean, these guys hit a ton of awesome moves. Um, O'Reilly's on the top turnbuckle, and Alexander is climbing up there to, you know, he's punching him in the face. Richards comes up from behind and picks him up for the electric chair. But... Alexander actually hits a reverse Hurricane Rana onto Davy Richards. And then Coleman runs up and gives um, Kyle O'Reilly a Hurricane Rana. And then Alexander hits him with a splash off the other turnbuckle. And that was just really awesome looking. Uh, Kyle kicks out though. Then they pick him up. Coleman's holding him. Alexander hits a stomp to the head off the top rope. And then Coleman kind of gives him an... Uh, attitude adjustment onto Alexander's knees and I mean they just they're an awesome team they have some great teamwork maneuvers and just really good these guys looked awesome here tonight and you know Richards is awesome Kyle O'Reilly looked really good it's just a good match all around um Kyle O'Reilly gets uh, Cedric Alexander into a guillotine and he's trying to choke him out but he's not tapping Davy Richards climbs the turnbuckle, hits a double stomp onto Alexander's back. Um, O'Reilly's able to, you know, tighten up on the guillotine, and then Alexander finally taps out. So Davy Richards and Kyle O'Reilly win the match, play the American Wolves music, and, I mean, it's kind of looking like they're going to be the new American Wolves, but Davy's still holding off on that. He says he's focused on the championship and not forming a new tag team right now. Um, after the match, Eddie Edwards comes out and he's clapping for him and, you know, gives him, gives him the thumbs up basically. But overall, it was a pretty good show. Um, I guess they did a, a lot of promos, but then again, when the show's only an hour, they got to fit in as much as possible. So they just have to get all the angles over. So I understand that. But they did set up, you know, next week they're going to give us an update on the All Night Express. Uh, the Briscoes and their problems with the House of Truth. Uh, Kevin Steen's going to make his TV debut next week. And they're going to have Jay Lethal versus Mike Bennett for the TV title. So, pretty good show next week, too. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Ring of Honor does next week. And I hope everybody liked this video. And subscribe to me if you haven't. And thank you to all those who have subscribed to me. I really appreciate it. And if you can, you know, like my videos. That helps me out a lot, too. And thank you for listening. Bye.